All right, so today we're going to walk through the process or introduce the process of creating a contour map. And a contour map is basically it helps show you information by using a set of things called ISO lines, where ISO basically means the same. What we're going to do is we're going to connect points that represent things that have the same value in space. For example, if I have a point here that has a value of five units, I will connect it to other points that have similar values of five units, creating a line that represents a position in space where everything has the same sort of value. This can be useful when you have what we are going to call sparse spatial data. In other words, you have information that's associated with some location in space Okay, in this case, the location might be on a map. It might be in two-dimensional space. It might be in three-dimensional space, but in the case of contour plots, we're going to be working in two-dimensional space. And with only a few of the locations that we may be interested in, for example, that we're able to sample the data from some places in space, but we may be interested in having values for more locations than we've actually sampled. Here's an example. Here I have a map. And this map is representing a number of watersheds where water might, have, might be falling and flowing. And we have located somewhere within this map a number of locations where we have sampled the rainfall in the area. So these numbers, these values, the 6.24, the 4.55, et cetera, are all measurements of amounts of rainfall, usually depths of rainfall. It is unclear what units are being used here, but there are different depths. And notice, we might be curious to figure out what depth of rainfall to associate with, for example, an entire watershed. Here in watershed D, for example, we might go ahead and assume that all the rainfall there was 4.67 units. However, if we're looking at something like, rain, uh, like watershed C, over here there is a value measured inside the watershed of 4.39 units, but on the other end of the watershed, there's a value here of 5.43 and it calls into question whether or not using this value measured inside is the only value that should be considered when thinking about how much rainfall is actually being measured inside watershed C. Similarly, this value of 6.01 may not be the only one influencing values that we might consider when thinking about the rainfall inside of watershed B. So, if we're interested in finding rainfall values elsewhere in places that we have not measured, it will be useful for us to interpolate where pole, the fancy word for the points of our data, and inter, meaning in between. We're going to find out or try to determine values for information that's between our poles or our different points. Now I've simplified this a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and use, I've gone ahead and copied all the values here um, of, my, uh, of my watershed map. I'm going to go ahead and create all the locations here so it might be a little bit easier to see what I'm doing on the page without the additional lines. But if you do have something, you can also go ahead and follow this process directly on the map if you want to. So let's discuss a little bit about what we need to do in a case like this. First of all, the idea with a contour plot is to create these lines of similar values. So first we're going to have to determine what lines of similar values do we want to use. In simple versions of contour plots, you simply could, you have a bunch of points that are all the same. Here, none of our values are exactly the same. We could make a very simplified contour plot by looking at the values 4, 4, 4, and connecting all the 4s, or connecting the 5s, or connecting the 6s. But that's a little complex. It's not exactly clear which ones you should connect and how, and that's actually not really the way we're going to build our ISO lines. So what we're going to do here, the first thing we want to do is establish a range for our data, where the range is the maximum value of the data minus the minimum value of the data. So if I peruse this map, I look carefully, and I try to locate the maximum value, which appears to be the highest value of 6.24 here in the lower right, on the right side. And our smallest value, our minimum value, is this value 3.86. So I'm going to record those two values, the max minus the min, 
Take my max value and subtract the minimum value to find my range. And those values are again the 6.24. And again, there are no units supplied. If there were, I should keep track of what they are. 6.24 units minus 3.86 units gives us a value of 2.38 as a range for my data. Now, my next part or the next piece is I need to choose how many contours or how many lines. Choose number of isolines. How many lines do I want to use to divide up my information? Usually a good number is somewhere between 5 or 10, a little bit closer to the 5, depending on the size of the map and how much data you actually have. But in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and use, well, we'll assume 5. It looks like 5 divides pretty closely into 2.38. Once we choose our number of isolines, if we choose 5, then we divide our range by isolines. Range divided by the number is going to be approximately 0.5. Now, I do not have to be exact here. In fact, I'm going to choose not to be exact because I'm going to choose numbers that are convenient. I'm going to use a, um, intervals. This is actually called an interval size of 0.5, which means I'm going to count um, in increments of half a unit. Once I've chosen the interval size, then I can choose a convenient set of intervals. In this case, I want to find intervals that range from my 3.86 to my 6.24 and count up in these values of 0.5. Well, I'm going to choose numbers that work nicely. I'm going to start at 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, and 6. And you'll notice by choosing those, I have now chosen five isoline values that are going to fit within my range from 3.86 to 6.24. So there are my isoline values, and I'm going to end up having six intervals. I have five values, but I'm going to have six intervals. First of all, there's going to be the interval from 3.86 up to 4. There's going to be the interval from 4 to 4.5, up to 5, up to 5.5, up to 6, one, two, three, four, five intervals, and then we have one more interval from six up to 6.24. So we have six intervals that we're going to have um, for our data and for our contour plot here. So now that I've established that interval size, we'll keep that in mind as I return to my map. There's my set of intervals as I'm looking at my map. And now the next step is I'm going to go ahead and choose a point to start from. And I often like to start from one of the points that's near the edge, near the sides of the map, to start to work from. And or usually one of the lower values that are, or the higher values, near the sides of the map. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and start with the 3.86. Here's this value, 3.86. And once I've chosen that value, I'm going to go ahead and choose a neighbor, figure out what its nearest neighbors are, and lightly sketch direct lines between the value and its nearest neighbor. Okay, I'm going to select a couple of neighbors here. All right, now that I've done so, I'm going to start with this closest neighbor here, this 5.06. And I'm going to look and see which intervals fit between the 3.86, which happens to be our lowest minimum value, and the 5.06. And I recognize that those intervals are 4 and 4.5 and, and 5. All three of those intervals fit within this range of 3.86 to 5.06. So there's going to be a range here where I'm going to draw in a line for 4, a line for 4.5, and a line for 5 somewhere along this line. Now, if I want to be particularly careful and particularly exact, I want to measure this distance here to figure out exactly how far to go. Let me actually walk through that process here. I know that my range of values goes from 5.06 to 
to 3.86. And if I subtract those two, I get 1.2 units. The value extends over 1.2 units. I'm similarly, if I want to be careful here, I can measure the distance here. And if I measure this distance, I don't know if you can see that, but that's a distance of 3 centimeters. Okay? Well now, I would like a relationship between how much distance there is for one unit. So I understand here there are our ratio or our slope is 3 centimeters per 1.2 units. And if I do the math there, 3 divided by 1.2, I get a value of 2.5 centimeters per unit. So, if I know there's 2.5 centimeters per unit, I can go back to this grid now and I need to know, I would like to know where to put the 4, the 5, the 4, the 4 and a half, and the 5. And we know that there's 2 and a half centimeters between each one. Well, I'm going to work backwards from the 5. I know the 5 is very close to this 5.06. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that 5 right next to the 5.06. And I'm going to move back that 2 and a half centimeters. Two and a half centimeters ends up being right there. There is my position for, well, it's, that's one unit away. If this is my five, this is one unit away, that must be four. And then halfway between those two, at about 1.25 centimeters, is the value 4.5. Notice that the 4, the 4.5, and the 5 are equally spaced here. And there's a little bit of space there representing the difference between the 3.86 and the 4, and a little bit of even less space there between the 5 and the 5.06. Now, if I want to be very careful, I could do these calculations and be carefully do these calculations for every one of these. But that's going to probably be a lot more detail than I actually need to do my math. What I'm going to try to do for each of these other lines is do a similar thing, but notice the spacing is going to be different. Here, I have a range that goes from 3.86 to 4.55. That's going to include 4 and 4.5, and but it's not going to be anywhere near the same distance as between 4 and 4.5 four and here. It's going to be much further spread out, so I'm going to have to estimate 4 and 4.5 four and in a different fashion there. Just to get a sense for how much it's, that's going to be, I look and I see that this is about 10 centimeters, and 10 centimeters is going to represent 4.55 minus 3.86, which is about 0.69 units. So if 0.69 units is equal to 10 centimeters, 5 centimeters is going to be about 0.35 units, so about halfway there is going to be 3.86 plus 0.35 is 4.1 or 4.27 or so. Now I don't need the value 4.27, I'm just trying to get a rough estimate for where things are going to be because what I'd like to put in here is 4.5 and 4. Well, let's see here, 4.27 and 4.55. 4.5 is going to be very close to the end over here. I'm going to estimate it to be right about there. And between 3.86 and 4.27, we're going to have four little closer to the 3.86, about a third of the way there. So I'm going to estimate it as being about a third of the way there. Again, I'm not being extremely careful. But the idea here is to sort of get a spacing that's equivalent in length. So if I put this at 4 and this at 4.5, notice a roughly half between is about where 4.25 is. I'm not being extremely careful. If I wanted to be extremely careful, I could again measure this out and then figure out how much distance would go between 3.86 and 4, figure out how much that is in centimeters. 
and continue. Once I've sort of created a value of 4 here and a value of 4.5 there, I can start creating a little bit of an ISO line. I can start making some connections. I see there's a 4 here and a 4 there. I'm going to choose a different color here, and with my red, I'm going to connect the two values of 4, and I'm going to connect the two values of 4.5. These are the beginnings of my ISO lines. Now I can do a similar process with each part here. I now move from this 3.86 to the 6.01. I recognize the numbers that have to go in there. Let's see here. Between the 3.86 and the 6.01, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five. All five of these need to fit in with just a little bit on either end. So, if I need to fit five and change intervals into eight, this is approximately a little more than eight centimeters. Eight divided by five is going to be about 1.6 centimeters per interval. So I'm going to start down here at 6, go about 1.6 centimeters, go another 1.6 centimeters, go another 1.6 centimeters, that, that's not 1.6 centimeters, go another 1.6 centimeters, and then my final 1.6 centimeters. Again, sort of a rough estimation there. Notice this is a little bit, let's see here, does this take into account all of them? There's five, if six is right up here at 6.01, there's 5.5, there's 5, there's 4.5, and there's 4. Now that's a little too far away from the 3.86. Maybe I need to shift it down and make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm going to make these, there's 6 again, make it slightly wider for each one. And now I can go ahead and label those 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, and then there's the 6 down there. And perhaps because the 6 was so close, I should divide divided it by fewer intervals. Again, we're trying to make e even spacing between each of these with a little less space on either side. And I'm doing my best to estimate in this case, although again, you can measure them more carefully if you would like. And now I can connect the 4 and the 4.5. And I can even connect here the 5 between these two particular points, but I don't know how much further it goes. I again repeat that process out here on the side over here, 4.66 and 3.86. Well, let me make some estimates there, 3.8 and 4.6. Let me go about halfway, which I would recognize as being 4.26 is about halfway. About halfway between each of those is going to be 4.06. And halfway here is 4.46. And notice I'm looking for 4.5, which we'll place right there, and 4, which we'll place over there. So again, using a couple of different methods to approximate where those pieces are. But now I have marks for 4 and 4.5. And again, connecting adjacent points that have similar values. So now I've sort of established values between 3.86 and its various neighbors. And notice there's an assumption that I was making in this process, and this is kind of a key assumption. The assumption is that there is a linear relationship, a linear range along any one of these lines. That if I have a value, such as my 3.86, and I'm moving through space, to a place where the value is 6.01,
as I move through space, my assumption is that the value rises linearly. That is not a perfect assumption. For all we know, it could dip down or it could rise up or there could be some strange bumps in there. But because we have no information about what's occurring in the middle, our simplest guess, our simplest interpolation is to assume it rises evenly over the segment. And those are the assumptions that I'm making when I'm making each of these lines to interpolate somewhere in between. So we've begun our contour plots here. What do we do next? Well, now we can repeat the process by choosing another point. This time I'll choose an interior point and choosing a few more lines connecting it, that point with its neighbors. I'll again sketch these lines in lightly. In this case, it has some neighbors that are significantly further away. And once again, we're going to try to make estimates for values between each of these points. We'll notice here in the case of 4.55 to 5.06 that that range only contains the 5.0. I mean, that only contains the 5. And it's going to be relatively close here somewhere along that line. So let's see here. If we measure this distance here, we'll see that that's about 9.5 centimeters, which is equivalent to about half a unit. Well, if I want 0 0.05 units, which is about the distance between 5.06, okay, that's going to be a tenth of that 9.5 centimeters, or roughly 0.95 centimeters, or about a centimeter. So my location of the line for 5 is about a centimeter away. And now, since I have a 5 on this line, and a 5 on this line, I can connect that contour. I'm going to similarly try to make estimations on each of the other lines. Notice this one is 5 to 6. We have the number 5, I mean 5.06 to 6 here, so we're going to have basically the values 5 and a half and 6. Well, that 5.5 and, and 6 going up to 6.24. Let's see here. 5.5, if we go halfway between 5.06 and 6.24, this is about 12. So halfway is going to be 5.65 is the point that's halfway there. And we're looking for 5.5. Let me divide that again. If I divide this in half, halfway between 5.65 and 5.06 is going to be about 5.36. And so we can estimate in that particular space there going from 3 to 6 that this is roughly 3, 4, 5. We're going to call this position here 5.5. Again, you can be more accurate if you would like. I'm trying to get an estimate for where that position is. There's 5.5. Okay, And then we had this 5.65. Let's see if we can figure out where 6 is. Well, if I'm careful, I can sort of see that this is a distance of about 5 centimeters. If I go another 5 centimeters, I'm going to get to the point that represents 6. Now notice, oops, this is 5.06. There's another very close spot right about here representing 5. And now my contour curves there. But there isn't a value of 5.5 here anywhere to connect yet. Where is that value going to come from? Well, that interpolation is going to come where between this 4.55 and the 6.2. Now I'm going to even be a little less accurate. We're going to say, let's see, 4.55 and 6 means I have a 5, a 5.5, and a 6 to fit in there. We're going to see the 5 is about a full distance, a full distance, a full distance, and maybe half a distance. So I'm going to see if I can do that. Full distance, full distance, full distance. That's not quite a half. Maybe I can extend that out a little bit further. A full distance, a full distance, a full distance. 
Oh, that's not quite that. So let me go a little bit shorter. We'll call that a full distance, a full distance, a full distance, and a half a distance. So now I'm beginning to eyeball it a little bit more than being accurate. If I'm using a computer, or if I care, I can measure each of those. But now I'm going to label this as being the location of 5, which is about half a unit from there. I'm going to label this as 5.5, which is the same half a unit, and label this here as 6. And notice the distance between 6 and 6.24 is less than those other lengths by about half. And now I can make a couple more connections here. Interestingly, we have some relationships we have to start thinking about in this case. Here's our connections between 6 and 6 and our connection between 5.5 and 5.5. But now we made an interesting sort of connection and turn here, and I actually made a mistake. Here I said that this was a value 5, but if I look carefully, this goes from 5.06 up to 6.24. This value here is not a 5. That value here, well, it isn't. 5, 5 is less than 5.06, so the 5 actually doesn't count here because this is a value that's going up. So let me fix that mistake. Say, oh, the curve doesn't go here, which is helpful because somehow we need to connect this value over here, this 5 that's over here. And let me go ahead and interpolate to connect that value. Notice we're beginning to get these segments, these intervals, across our area. I'm going to sketch just a couple more intervals so we get a better sense for what it looks like. Notice something very interesting has happened here. I have a range here that goes from 5.06 to 5.43. but We have none of our intervals actually passing through any of that range. So even though I can estimate where 5.1, 2, 3, and 4 are, there is no 5.5 or even a 5 for this action to attach to. So where do these two intervals go to? Well, both of those intervals must actually exit out here. In this case, 6.2 to 5.4. We have 5.8 in the middle. This is about 6.0. This would be about 5.6, so about 5.5 right about here. And so now my contour at this side turns and turns to connect there. Whereas on this side over here, the number 5 that we actually have attached here. We do have a value 5 here, but we don't have anything to connect it to quite yet. Neither do we have for the value 4.5 here at the moment. I'll continue. Now I have some other connections to make. 5.5 connecting to 5.5, connecting to 5.5, 5.0, connecting to 5.0, 4.5, connecting to 4.5. And you can see how the contours begin to fill out. Now that I've established some more values for our various contours, I can start connecting them. Here's 5.5 connected to 5.5. Here's 5.5 connected to 5.5.
here's our 5 connected to our 5 right here, which can connect to the 5 over there. This 5.5 .5 needs to find somewhere to sort of escape or get out, so it connects to the 5 over here. Our 6 connects to the 6, which connects to the 6, which connects to the 6. In each of these locations, there's a, there's a value that's sort of surrounding the 6.01, and you'll notice we actually get sort of a circle here. Usually when you have something that encapsulates or that goes all the way around, that represents a high point or a peak. So we have a high point here around this particular point. Similarly, when I try to connect these 5.5s, we end up finishing the circle there. We can connect the points to 5 here. And similarly, 5.4, this is roughly 5. Five here between four point three, this is four point five. All right, and with that, we've completed at least the interpolation parts or the inside parts. Well, actually, I could add one additional piece down here between the 5.37 and the 5.43. Notice we actually don't have a piece that can escape there, so we must connect these two here. So now I've completed the interpolation, the inside parts of my contour map. Notice, if we wanted to know information outside the map, we would have to do some extrapolation, extra, going outside of the points, extrapolation. Unfortunately, since we don't have any information out that about the area outside the points, the best we can do is make an estimate by roughly sketching, usually with dotted lines, where we think the curves might be taking us. However, because we have no idea about the values outside of there, we don't necessarily have any idea about what might happen. It could curve back. Down here at the bottom, we could have it curving back around. Okay, but again, this becomes a guess, and the further we get from the outside, outside of our points, the less valuable this information becomes. Let's interpret what this information means. Each of these lines represents a value, and if we're smart, we'll go ahead and label that value. This is the value 4, this has the value 4.5, this is our 5 value, this is our, let's see, there's our value 5, this is also our value 5, this is 5.5, this is 6, this is 6, and this is 5.5, and this comes down to 4.5. So each of those lines has a value that anywhere on that line that's the value that's associated with it. So if this is inches of rainfall, I could say, reason, I, I could make a reasonable estimate that the amount of rainfall at this point here, which we didn't measure, would actually have a value of 5. The intervals themselves also have a meaning. Basically, any space that's represented between any two intervals, for, actually this, for example, the space I've shaded in, basically states that the rainfall there ranged from 4.5 to 5. And if you would like to interpolate any space in there, you can do so by estimating how far you are away from one line or the other. If you're halfway in between, that might represent a value of about 4.75. If you're a little closer to 4.5, you could estimate that that value is something around 4.6, going this direction, 4.8, 4.9, etc.